Welcome to a new episode of my home automation open hub and node red playlist. This time I show an example how to monitor the toner levels in your printer in node red and send out a notification when the toner is running low. I will be using SNMP to monitor the toner levels and use IFTT to add the toner to my shopping list in Evernote. As usual, links to the supporting documents and code examples are in the video description. This time I only did the coding in Node-RED. It would be easy to get OpenHab to display the same values, but the logic to act on when the toner is low would be a little bit more complicated. If you go into Google and just search for, let's say, HP, toner level, SNMP, you will find a lot of references how people are trying to get the, uh, the toner level and some other administrative or diagnostic data out of the, out of the printer. And most probably the printer that you have uh, sitting at home supports SNMP. I have a reasonably new Ricoh um, black uh, laser printer at home and I just wanted to do the same. I just wanted a mechanism that would automatically detect uh, when the toner is running low, which, well, the printer does on the screen anyway, but then instead of sending an email or doing another notification, which I might just ignore, actually, you know, put something into my shopping list. So next time I go and uh, arrange my shopping or I'm into town, I should remember to buy the new toner for my printer. So, but what is SNMP? So SNMP stands for Simple Network Management Protocol, which is used for many uh, network devices like routers or servers to monitor health and diagnostic information. And actually that has been incorporated into printers as well. The data in SNMP is, uh, is monitored in some sort of, uh, or categorized in trees. And there is documentation uh, which each of these nodes and each of the levels mean, but we don't have to do a lot because uh, we can pretty much uh, discover the whole thing ourselves. For this, we will need a program called SNMP Walk in, um, on the Raspberry Pi. And to install that, you need to install SNMP. So you just uh, do sudo apt-get install SNMP, and that should install the SNMP component, which I have it already, so it's not really doing anything right at the moment. And to install the, um, uh, to use this program, I'm just going to uh, uh, do this uh, example. So you say SNMP walk um, space dash V, space 2c which is stands for version 2c and then um, again dash c public which is uh, says that it's the uh, um, i think public community again don't really ask what it means you can google it if you are really interested but you know it just works that way that's all you have to remember and then next uh, you provide the ip of your um printer, your network printer, and then you uh, you provide this node ID, which is 1.3.1.3.6.1.2.1.34.5.1.1.16.1.1. And if you have a printer which supports that, that node is going to give you the printer name. So this is my Ricoh SP213SFNW. And um, there are a couple of sites and examples how to determine these numbers. And if you just, you know, Google SNMP and your printer name, most probably you will find some references, but um, all these ideas are, are, are pretty much set. So uh, in this example, this is the, um, uh, that's the, you know, the, the printer name. And if I give this other, um, other parameter, then what I'm getting, I'm getting some sort of number and I happen to know that this is the total counter. So the total number of pages uh, for my particular printer. But again, even if it's not a total number of pages, it, it's going to be some sort of pages. Maybe it's going to be the total black or the total black and white, uh, sorry, the total color or something like that. <clears throat> and um, um, to, to get the actual tonal values, I give this string out, which is, you see the, uh, everything is the same until 43 and then it keeps changing. So it's like a different value. And um, so my particular printer, that is going to be the, uh, the, uh, the toner level. And um, 
And I think that at this point, I should just uh, men, uh, talk a little bit about these values that are coming back. So here, what you can expect is the actual level in your printer, which is not going to be percentage, uh, but um, as some sort of level. But there is another value which gives you the max uh, printer level, uh, which is, oh, sorry. Um, it is 8.1.1. Um, so let's say in my example, the maximum um, value of my toner or the maximum level is minus two and my current one is minus three. And um, sometimes printer these give out these minus values. And this means that um, the toner is probably uh, very close to being um, very low or uh, completely empty. And in my particular case, I'm still using the, uh, the toner that was supplied with my printer when I got it and I know that uh, Rico uses this um, low capacity toners um, uh, that those are the ones which are provided uh, when you buy a new toner and they can't uh, give you the exact levels it's probably the chip inside or whatever don't really ask but if you buy a proper toner if well, I you know if this goes out and I buy a proper big one that should give me the numbers so let's say the the max is going to give me like the max value is 1000 and uh, the actual value which is a 911 is 800 so that means that my toner is 80% um, full and this all might seem a little bit um, you know complicated but actually uh, what this SNMP walk does if you start removing some of these values and if I let's say only um, do an SNM walk with 11.1.1 .1, um, it is going to show me all the values in under that note uh, in that node and under it so what I can see here for example is um, uh, the six 611 gives me the the name of the cut uh, the name of the toner again because I have um, a black and white printer I only have a black cartridge but let's say if you would have a um, uh, like a color printer so you would probably have four different cartridges and they would come up with different numbers here uh, like um, 6.1.1, 6.1.2 or something like that. And what I can definitely tell is, so six, um, when the number is six here, that would give me the name of the cartridge. When it is eight, then it's the max capacity and the nine is the current level. So the max level and the current level. Okay, maybe the way I, um, I explained it was a little bit complicated. So let me show you an example. Again, I was just on Google and I happened to find this um, in post in Stack Overflow, which is about, um, you know, some whatever color printer. So they are using the exact same method. SNMP walk, we to see public the IP and then, um, uh, so 11.1.1.6, they are, uh, using that node and as you can see uh, this particular printer has a few uh, different cut toner cartridges well five well four toner cartridges and the waste box and then some other stuff so you can see that the number changes uh, for all of them so they all become they all six here because uh, six always gives you the name and then one two three four five six seven and if you if you get all the um, if, you, if you do SNMP walk again but um, you query the this node which is the 11119 then you would get the values back and these values would correspond to the to the cartridge uh, cart uh, the toners that you see here so 611 is the back uh, black cartridge and 911 is the is the actual level of the of the black toner or 613 is the magenta and then 913 is the actual level and again you see that he's getting minus three as well so um, uh, it's that value is, is being used by many different printers okay yet another example and hopefully this is going to make it clear so um, I think this one is a some sort of L, um, HP laser jet color one so again you do the 60s so you see it's it's not six uh, one one but six zero one zero two zero three so those are the four different ink types and then the eights would give you the maximum values and then hopefully um, well we don't have an example of the nines but you see that 
in certain cases with certain printers or toner types, this is actually you know showing the the values. But if you are still a little bit uncertain, what you can also do is you can do an SNMP walk and just only provide uh, the the level so one three six one two one forty three and you enter and it's going to give you everything related to this printer so it's going to be quite a big list and um, you see some stuff here which, which is probably going to be um, familiar so for example this is the ready I'm not printing at the moment so that's the state and again energy saver mode I see the same stuff on the screen of my printer and then you have a lot of numbers and a lot of other stuff and you know probably speeds again you see the cartridge levels here and um, what else yeah okay what is the default tray what is the manufacturer um, okay that could be another tray and what you need to do at this point is probably you have like a status page for your printer or the printer has its own website. So if you're if you're looking for a particular value, um, you can Google your printer and if you're lucky, you will you will find the SNMP IDs for that particular model or you just try to match values uh, from from this list against what you see on your screen. This is my flow. Uh, not too complicated and that's the piece of the UI element that I've designed for it. It doesn't do much, so it shows me the page count and it shows me the, the toner level. But because I'm getting these minus three values, I'm just not displaying anything. And um, again, just for statistical reasons, I always save the timestamp when I last managed to update the printer. So I usually turn off my printer when I'm not using and I set this logic up to execute every second, sorry, every hour. Um, so hopefully when the, the toner is on, um, uh, Node-RED would be able to connect and get the latest uh, data. Otherwise it would just not get anything and, and nothing really happens. So the flow starts up here, uh, which is a simple inject node, and it's set up to repeat uh, every 60 minutes. So again, once every hour, I try to get the updated stats out of the printer. And um, the easiest way for me to get the values is actually execute these uh, the SNMP comments, what we have seen here, um, so these, and, um, and then extract the you know the values uh from the you know from the screen or from the application response whatever it's called um into node red so for that i'm using the execute node so you can find it um i don't even know where it is Yeah, it's here under advanced. Should have done this in the first time. And uh, what I do here is uh, the exec command is exactly what I've uh, used in the terminal screen. So I have one command which executes the um, uh, the value which gets the maximum toner, the actual toner level, the page count, and oops, I forget to rename uh, rename this. So this is the printer name. And the the uh, the exact node has three outputs. The first one gets the the value which you see on the screen, and that's what we are going to use because um, what we need is we know that we are always getting this um, value back. So it's uh, the the node and then equals the type and then colon and then the actual value. So what I'm going to do is find colon and then extract the uh, the the content which comes after the colon, which is going to be my actual value. And that's what I'm doing in the in the function node. So the, in the first function node, I'm just setting the, the topic toner max and the payload is, um, it's basically, uh, I'm getting the payload, I'm using this slice command, which is uh, getting part of the string. And it is starts at the colon plus two because uh, there's always a space after the colon and um, I'm just being lazy I'm saying I want the next 1000 characters that is definitely not going to be that much and I'm doing a trim after that which gets rid of any um, unnecessary spaces 
and uh, I'm doing exactly the same for the uh, for the map uh, the actual level I'm just calling the topic toner level and after that the page count does the same um, but just puts a different topic and the last one is the printer name which again is does the same but it doesn't have the parse in because it's a string so I don't want to convert the values to an integer <coughs> So the time step is actually executing four requests. And um, mm, because I only have uh, a black and white printer, I only need the toner levels for one of the toners. So if you have a color one, you actually need, you know, two times, let's say if it has four toners, then two times four plus another one page count and another printer. So it's going to be, uh, what, 10, yeah, uh, 10 altogether. I don't know if there is any limit how many of these uh, requests the, the printer can handle or the system can handle. So if it doesn't work, maybe you want to use the delay uh, node ju um, just to delay the you know some of these requests by, let's say, 100 milliseconds or something like that. <laughs> but anyway, so we are getting all these details back and I just want to process them all together. So I'm using this join node which uh, um, what it does is says that um, this join node should wait for four messages because I have four nodes or um, time out after 20 seconds. So if anything happens with one of them, um, one of them cannot execute, it will time out after 20 seconds and it's going to collect the um, my messages using a key value pair uh, which means that it's using the topic as the key and the payload as the value. Okay, good. So the four requests are getting executed um, uh, simultaneously and this join node is going to join the results together. And then next I go into this calculation logic, which it looks a little bit complicated, but it's not um, an awfully complicated logic. So first, I'm setting the um, is the threshold, which is the is the minimum um, tonal level. So if the tonal level drops below this, then I will get a notification. So um, and <coughs> so first, I'm setting this uh, message payload notification to false. So I'm going to use this uh, to to later on detect if I actually need to send out a notification. Um, first, I'm checking if I have a valid payload, um, so if I get any data back from the toner, and then ne and next I'm checking whether the whether I'm getting any valid max and toner max and toner level values. Um, so I just make sure that they are not uh, null and and they are not um, NAN, which is um, so you would get NAN back if the integer conversion fails. And if I'm getting no uh, valid values back from the printer, I'm setting the percentage to zero and I'm setting the validity to minus one. Again, I will use the validity later on to decide whether I want to update the, the UI or not. Obviously, if I don't have any valid values, I'm not going to update the UI. Otherwise, if the, if the, tonal, uh, if the tonal max and the tonal level are uh, less than zero. So these are the cases where you are getting minus twos and minus threes back. I'm um, saying that I don't know about the toner, the toner percentage, but I consider this valid. So I want to update the UI with something later on. Uh, for example, the page count. These three lines um, basically calculate the um, the actual toner level. So if you have four toners, uh, then you would need to um, uh, multiply these rows and again I would I would guess that if if, if your printer gets uh, valid values for one of your toner probably it's going to give you valid uh, readings for all the toners but again you probably have to decide or see your particular printer okay uh, moving on and um, so next I'm checking whether the the toner percentage is less than the threshold so that's what I set up here so I'm saying that if I'm if my toner b drops below 10%, I need to do I need to do something. So then first we check if we already sent out a sent out a notification. So I'm checking whether I have uh, this um, 
uh, from the global variables, which is called tonal notification, I check whether it's true or, um, sorry, if it's not true or it doesn't exist. So let's say if you are using it for the first time, obviously this global variable doesn't exist. So what I'm, uh, what I do here in the code is uh, I set the flag so notification equals true. Again, I'm going to use this later in the flow just to say that okay, I need to send out something, and I also set this global flag to true. And I'm using this because um, you know this code runs and your tonal is 9%, so it will send out a notification. So when it comes around after one hour, it should know that it has already sent out a notification and my toner is still you know, below 10, so um, it's not going to send it again every single hour. Fine. Um, and this piece of code here is responsible for resetting the notification once it finds out that the, um, uh, the toner level has gone above the notification i just added plus 10 here just to make sure that um it's uh, the the code is not being fooled if the if the notification ch uh, sorry if the percentage level uh, goes up and down i don't know whether it's valid but i thought that would be a safer uh, solution so if the toner percentage goes ab above thresholds plus 10 so let's say you replace the toner then um and if i have uh, this uh uh, global flag set then I'm switching it off so again now because it's being off this part of the code is being checked again and it will trigger again once this new toner also uh, drops below 10% um, this is um, this is just the else handling of the very first initial check and that's it and the last piece of code, so these few rows are uh, here just to format this uh, date type. So again, if you don't like this format, then you would need to change here. Basically, I'm just getting the year, month, day, hour, minute, second, and I'm just putting it together here. So you can change the order if you want. So that's the that's all the code which is responsible for calculating the tonal level. Um, well, determining if the, the, the toner level values that we got from the printer is valid. If they are valid, calculate the, uh, the actual percentage and send out a notification if required. And all this information is going to be sent in this payload. So the notification tells me if I need to send out a notification. The valid tells me if I have a valid reading, I need to update the screen. The toner percentage is showing me the actual percentage. And the value one is showing me the toner name, which I'm going to be using later that I need to send to, uh, to Evernote. Okay. Um, so from the calculation logic, um, uh, well, I have this payload here just for debugging purposes. And if I actually trigger this now, um, you see the same. So I'm getting printer name is my recall, toner max is minus two, toner level is minus three. So these are the values I'm getting. I have a page count of uh, 141 and a notification is false. So I don't need a new toner at the moment. The percentage is unknown. It is valid. Uh, well, validity is zero and the timestamp is this. So here in the next check, I'm checking this validity, so which is zero at the moment. So it's either zero or one. So again, zero means that I was able to communicate with the printer, but I don't have a valid uh, toner levels. So in this case, what I'm doing, which is a little bit hard to see, is I'm updating the page count and I'm updating the last update, but I'm not updating the toner. And if the validity is one, which means I have valid toner readings, I'm updating the page count, I'm updating the toner level, and I'm also updating the last update. And this is why for me, uh, this field has no values because I'm getting these stupid values from my uh, printer. So that's one. The next one is, um, uh, is this check here, which checks for the notification. So this notification, uh, so this message.payload.notification tells me that I need to send, I need to add the toner to my uh, shopping list. Um, so if this is true, then it goes to here. And all I'm doing here is I'm um, formatting the, the output which I'm going to send to 
IFTT and it requests, uh, sorry, it expects, expects the data in a special format. So it expects value one, value three, and value, sorry, value one, value two, and value three. And in value one, I'm going to put my value one, which is the printer, the toner name. So that's, that's what it says, like black toner in my case. And value two is the actual printer name, and I'm not using value three for anything. And the data coming out from the format node goes into a HTTP request. So this is a standard node in um, a, a part of Node-RED. And what is important is we are making a POST request and we are making this request to this particular uh, address. Oh, by the way, it just fired again. Um, and um, I think everything else is standard. So why is this one and how we are going to get it? IFT or IFTTT stands for if this and that. And this service allows you to connect cloud services together by defining um, what should happen if something is triggered in one of the service, how it should affect another service. And what we are going to use is we are going to send the trigger to IFTT saying that we have a low toner and we are going to ask um, IFTT then to trigger an event in Evernote, which creates an item in in a in a note in Evernote, which is which we are going to call the shopping list. So um, first thing to do, obviously you need to go to IFTT and create an account, and then uh, here in uh, in search you have to find the maker uh, service. And because I have this service configured already. Uh, I, I come to this screen, but if you don't have it, you probably there is going to be a connect button that you need to click. And if I click on settings, then I see the settings of this maker service, which is really simple. Um, what is um, uh, interesting to note here or useful to note is this URL. And if I type this URL into a separate window, then I get a little bit of explanation about the, the service, which basically tells me that in order to generate this service, I need to call HTTPS maker.iftt.com slash trigger slash the event name and slash with slash key and slash your key, which is uh, uh, unique to yours. <laughs> so um, now what we need to go here is go back to Node-RED into the IFTT, uh, well, this HTTP request, which I, I uh, renamed to IFTT call and paste that um, sorry, I was on the wrong tab. So uh, you go to your HTTP request node and you paste that a link into the into the URL. So you create an HTTP request. It should be a post. You you post this URL in. So I change my to toner with capital T. So that's going to be my keyword. I left everything else uh, on default. And now we need to go back to IFTT and we need to tell them what should happen if we receive a call. So a, I click on my applets and I create a new applet. First step is to define what is the input trigger. So if this happens, then something else uh, needs to happen. So in our case, we need to select the, the service which is triggering the event, which is the maker service. And uh, so you have a couple of triggers to choose from. Usually you have more, but for the maker service, you only have one. So it receives a request through the web, which is this node, which is sending out the request. And then you need the request name. So our request name is the toner. And again, remember, it's this keyword here. Uh, so after trigger and uh, before the bid. So it's toner. And next, Next, now you define what should happen when this trigger is received. And again, as I said, there are zillions of different things that you can do. Um, I'm just picking Evernote as, a, as an easy, easy example. But if you are using Facebook, you can post a Facebook message saying that you need to buy a, a new toner or, you know, send an email or a Twitter or um, create a calendar in your Google Calendar to, to do that. So Evernote. And um, um, I'm using this one, append a note. Well, I think it's uh, append this to do note. And um, uh, so what is the title? It's the title of your uh, uh, 
list in Evernote. It can be, well, it's just a text. And it, well, if this doesn't exist, it it's obviously will get created. If it exists, then um, it will just append a new item to your shopping list. And, and then, um, in this to-do is the actual um, text uh, that gets uh, entered to the uh, to your shopping list. So what we are going to use is we are going to use the different uh, um, values that are coming through from Node-RED. And if if you remember, we um, sorry this one, we put uh, sorry this one. So we put the um, the name of the toner into value one and we put the name of the printer into value two. So what I'm going to do here is say value one, so black toner four and value two, you know, HP color, whatever, or Rico SP something in my case. And you click on create action. I'm not going to do that because I already have one. And that's all there is to it. Now the only thing which is left to test the uh, the IFT integration and actually it is probably a little bit difficult to test it in a real, real life scenario as I don't really have a toner which would give me a really low um, level so what I've done I've created this inject node and I'm creating some test data in this function so I'm feeding max value as 100 level 5 and the printer name which should give me like 5% uh, toner level and I, I have a couple of payloads here just to see what the uh, um, the code is doing. So if I do a test, then what I can see is um, um, from the calculation logic, I'm getting what is it? Notification true. Um, and then here in the second one, um, I can see the value one, value two, value three being um, sent to IFTT. And if I switch over to the shopping list and if I refresh. Then besides eggs, what I had already in my shopping list, I have black toner for Rico SP something something. So uh, it is working. Um, and now if I would do it again, um, I'm sending the same data in. You can see the notification is false because now the, the code has remembered that I've already sent out a notification. I don't need to send it again. Um, so I'm not getting a second item in my shopping list for the same toner. And obviously it will get reset once the toner is changed and the level goes up to threshold plus 10. Mm -hmm. I've also added this little inject here just to, um, uh, to reset the notification just for my testing purposes. And probably you can hear in the background that my, my phone was uh, ringing because every time I have TT executes an action, um, I'm also getting a notification on my phone. I hope you find this video useful. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.